So from your conversations with your clients over the first quarter of the year, what are their main concerns this year and why? Yes. Again, I'll, I'll go back to my first uh, answer, if I may. Mm -hmm. And this is going back, I think that I'll, I'll put it in three buckets, if I may. Yeah. So definitely their concerns is the trade tensions. Yes. And how does that impact their portfolio? Their investments, yeah. And the growth that they've seen, are we going to continue? Shall we continue or shall we take some, ta some risk off the table? Mm -hmm. Again, sell in me and go away. So, so those yeah. are sort of big things that they're looking at in saying that the trade tensions that's happening, how do we look at it? How do we evaluate? How do we look at it? And, and part two of that is that there's a lot of research that comes out there. And there's a lot of literature on there with a lot of different banks giving a lot of different views. Mm -hmm. And that is where I think it's important for a bank like us to look at an unbiased view and try to filter it out and, and tell them on based on the various views, what is the synopsis mm -hmm. and how do we look at it? So that is what we look at it in terms of. So the second problem, as I said, is the saying that is the, the, the issue of a lot of information and how do we sort of dissect that and how do we sort of condense that and actually filter that makes sense. So that's what I would call the second. The third one, and in my humble opinion, is, is, is as much as less of worrying but more of opportunistic view. What we've seen in the last couple of years that the, the, the growth rates in terms of businesses and various in Middle East and Africa have been a bit subdued. And I think there's a great opportunity now, and the clients are feeling that definitely with the oil prices and the economic activities that are happening in our region, there's a lot of local investment and opportunities that they see coming back to the region. So that's how they're looking at it, if I may. Okay, so how then do family offices differ in different parts of this region, and how, how do you cater to them? So the family offices, and again, I, I, I would like to break it up, the family office part in terms of in the region where they're looking at different parts for investments. And let me explain what I mean by that. So a lot of the family offices here, first we're looking at London as the core sort of booking center to mm -hmm. look at and, and looking at UK assets. We're looking at real estate as part of the overall asset allocation. Mm -hmm. So looking at financial investments as well as real estate. And that is where if we look at the, those family offices are not looking at sort of only financial investment, but I mean looking at a holistic approach where they want to look at sort of investable assets and non-investable assets and, and how do we combine that and look at it as a holistic approach. So that is what we've seen in, in the family offices looking at UK as an investment uh, base and how do we look at that. We've seen a, a, an emerging trend that a lot of these family offices are also looking at sort of Singapore and Hong Kong mm -hmm. and, and, and that sort of that that pull towards east is definitely coming. That is where they're looking at in terms of the booking centers in Singapore and Hong Kong are more efficient, who work at a sort of round the clock and they're saying that the advice that they get from those booking centers, the activity levels are much higher. And if you want access to Asia, then it's a natural tendency to go to Singapore or Hong Kong because that is where you're seeing the flows. So that is the trend that we're seeing on, on, on that side. So there is, as I said, this both ends of the sort of family office that we're seeing in terms of.